Tackle today, Justice Brothers from Tackle Trading, bringing you all the charts, news, and analysis so you can be informed in just a few minutes. NVIDIA continues to be in the news. Chinese stocks having a bad day, commodities under a little bit of pressure, tech outperforming, and that's where I want to lead off. Matt, yesterday we noted that in the interday, actually, we saw a little bit of tech outperformance, nothing to write home, but something to note. Well, it's noticeable today. Tech's leading right now. Break down the major indices for us. Yeah, when you're looking at the indexes here, a uh, little bit of a tough uh, start to the week uh, yesterday as we did see that downward pressure in price. It was hovering that doji most of the day, and then all of a sudden, uh, as, the, as the train day kept on going on, just that selling pressure picked up, down, 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 down. Good upward pressure in price here today. Got a little bit of a gap up cleaned that uh, uh cleaned and cleared that uh, candle from yesterday now you're right back up at that overall resistance and you're absolutely right on the index side of the equation the one index that is leading the charge in 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 the last few days is the nasdaq it's it's slight but it is noticeable and and when you're looking at that you know leadership right now out of the nasdaq you have to say that is coming from nvidia the semiconductors a little bit but nvidia has been in the news uh two of the last three days with uh some positive news coming out on the blackwell chip we'll talk about them here in just one second when you're looking at the heat map here today you can kind of see the lay of the land and kind of what is really happening at the index level you're seeing a lot of green in the in the technology areas of the market communication uh consumer cyclicals starting to turn around a little bit there as well so you see this green whenever you're uh you're at the bright green at the top level the left hand side of the heat map that's usually showing you an aggressive move in the market whereas all of your defensive sectors some of your cyclical sectors here on the bottom side obviously we got a big down in energy and that's what's really kind of leading the charge here today is a big drop in crude big drop in energy improving conditions in the market obviously showing you at least on one day the 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 news story that is really kind of hesitating the market from breaking out based on what we're seeing in crude oil today is most likely the uh, geopolitical situation happening in 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 Iran and Israel Israel and there was a little bit of news over the last 12 hours that some of those worst case scenarios uh maybe not be on the table for uh Israel yeah tech has been something that we've had our eye on for a while as a potential leader it's nice to see two days in a row uh, and you know I, a little I would bit. Give it three. I would give it three. I, I think you got to include last Friday. Yeah, and so like it, it's just noticeable. It's one of those things. I know it's where I'm gravitating to on credit trades, potentially new trades. Uh, you know, so yeah, we were in the lounge yesterday. Coach Craig, you, myself, were there breaking down all the activity uh, with our community, and I would say. You know, when we were talking with the community about, I would say about 70% of the uh, of the people there were expecting the cues to lead a little. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, uh, not a lot on the economic front today. A little small, little tidbit from the small uh, business index uh, came in basically in line with expectations. Uh, the big economic reports, we talked about these yesterday, coming up uh, CPI on Thursday, PPI on Friday. Uh, and FedSpeak, just like to make one little comment on FedSpeak, was generally supportive of, hey, listen, I know we had hot economic data, more rate cuts are coming. I think that's playing into some of the positive sentiment that the Fed had sent a pretty clear message on all of their speakers. It's almost like it was coordinated, Matt. <laughs> uh, well, uh, neutral to bullish economic analysis is going to be good for the market in a rate cutting cycle. Um, as long as they're on the path down to 2.2% 2. Uh, on inflation and they they do have confidence in the path being down to 2% by the end of 2025. I mean, the expectation for CPI report this month is 2.3%. But at the end of the day, as long as the inflation is coming down to 2%, they're going to see that as a win. And they're not going to keep a high interest rate just to restrict the economy. Uh, if, if, if inflation is on the path down to 2%, they will alleviate that restricted territory of the, of the interest rate all the way down to about 3.25% over the next year and a half. Yeah, no, listen, we've been talking about these in the Trading Justice Podcast. For more in-depth analysis, check out this Sunday's podcast. Matt, while the macro continues to flow through the markets, uh, individual stock stories, what do we got today? Well, and it started it started to pick up. We had a lot a lot of 
you know, upgrades, downgrades yesterday. Now we're starting to get into a little bit of the earnings with Pepsi. Obviously, that starts picking up quite a bit as we get through the uh, to the end of this week. Uh, Pepsi came out with earnings and they reported Q3 earnings and came out with basically in-line earnings report. Uh, you had basically 231 against two, uh, 232 on the on the EPS side of the equation. Revenue came in right about at the expectation, and year-over-year year revenue fell less than one percent. So we're talking about a chalk report here. Uh, not a big, uh, not a big uh, in terms of you know beats versus misses. That's not really part of the conversation when it comes to Pepsi. And then on the guidance, you want to talk about a boring report here on the guidance side of the equation. They also reaffirmed for we're looking guidance so we call it a hat trick when you beat eps revenue and increase in guidance we call it the um uh we've called it a few different things on the when you miss on eps miss on revenue and lower guidance uh, i don't know what this is i've been calling it a walk in the park when you don't have anything to really talk about on the earnings and that's kind of where pepsi is here today uh, on the Nvidia front, uh, this is the second time in the last three trading sessions, and one of the reasons, if not the reason, the queues are outperforming here uh, in in this market uh, environment is the fact that uh, Blackwell Chip. Uh, first of all, it was last Friday when Jensen came out and said we are having insane demand on uh, the Blackwell Chip, which is the latest uh, edition of their AI driven uh, GPU. Uh, then today, Foxconn's chairman came out and said there is strong demand coming out for the upcoming Blackwell chip. And so you're just having a, 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 a pretty good little couple day stretch of people raving about the demand equation of that Blackwell chip, which is really, really good. And it's really important to get that message out, Mark, because the last three months have been driven from ASML's dropping guidance to Taiwan Semiconductor maintaining guidance to NVIDIA's, you know, guidance not being where they wanted to be with Foxconn and 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 the Blackwell chip. And then all of a sudden, the last few days, you're starting to see this come out on NVIDIA. NVIDIA can lead really strongly. So it's good to see that NVIDIA is kind of leading that charge. And then the third stock story, I didn't want to pick just one um, because in general, we're seeing something that's impacting the, the, the Chinese stocks as well as the commodity stocks out there. And that's just a little bit of a story coming out of China that there was no new, and I want to be very clear on that, new economic stimulus coming out of China's state planner this week. And because of that, you're seeing a pretty violent snapback on some of those Chinese components. When you are looking at this from a technical perspective, and we'll start with Pepsi here. When you are looking at this on a technical perspective, it was a doji type fundamental report uh, coming from the low point. Obviously, you're going to get picked up, especially with the market up more than a percent in the queues and close to a percent in the S&P. And so this was a, a, a doji report. I mean, we came in line, in line, in line on all three of the major components of an earnings report. You're seeing the upward movement in price, given the fact that you're coming from the low point, as well as what the general market is doing here today uh semiconductors have been very interesting as they obviously are starting to pick up a little bit of steam here nvidia was obviously the catalyst of that we saw outperformance over the last four days in nvidia versus semis which have seen outperformance over the last three days versus the s p now you're seeing the beginning of momentum and that's what happens. It doesn't usually happen in a singular moment in time unless it's an earnings report. Outside of that, not everybody looks at news on every single given day. This news takes a little bit of time to work around the globe. You got a little bit of a momentum situation happening, in, uh, happening on NVIDIA right now with, once again, Jensen coming out last Friday, insane demand on the Blackwell chip. Uh, Foxconn chairperson came out today. We're, we're seeing amazing demand on the on the uh, G, on the uh, Blackwell GPU. So you're you're seeing that. Obviously, earnings isn't for a very well, uh, long time from now. You've got about about a little bit over a month uh, from that point. So it's not going to be an earnings story. We're talking about momentum here on Nvidia. And then on FXI, when you're looking at FXI here, just a really big gap down here. It's kind of hard to see because you're looking at the price going up, 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 up. You got to shift your eyes down here around that 90 MA. Obviously, we're seeing that play out. Now, in my estimation, Mark, 
this gap down situation is is not as bad as it looks because you had a metric rise. You've had a momentum environment, gap up, gap up, gap up, seeing a little bit of that same energy down. And that's how I would see it is a oh, little absolutely, bit of absolutely. energy on the downside. And you are seeing it in the commodity space as well that we Yeah, will- before we get to commodity, just one comment. It was it was bound to happen the first day that a Chinese official didn't promise uh, you know, infinite stimulus. You know, a parabolic trend was going to have some volatility to the downside. That was a given baked in, right? What happens now is going to be very interesting from here. Yeah, and I think it's understandable that the Chinese government isn't going to infinitely stimulate. And what they did last week was a bazooka to the market. And so I think I uh, give that a little bit of time to digest. But I, I, I see the gap down more as, you know, traders locking in profit on that initial move than I see anything else. Yeah, no, and, and some of that volatility, because commodities are so tied to China, some of that volatility is carrying over into the commodity space. Once again, the, these one day, oh my goodness, it was all over. Let these moves digest, new patterns emerge, new opportunities emerge. Uh, but as always, you start with the dollar in what looks like a classic high base form. Yeah, it is a classic high base right now. And 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 if you're going to see continuation on the dollar back up in a V-shaped scenario, it is going to put pressure on the specifically the industrial metals and 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 on gold. And so on on the commodities in general, it will put pressure, but it will put more pressure on the precious metals and, and the industrial metals. And so I, I do start with the dollar because the dollar technical read is very important to me. Now, in this situation right here, you're you're looking at a little bit of a reversal with the high base. That's obviously bullish analysis in the short term. In the longer term, you got some challenging uh, overhead resistance levels that is going to play a role in that conversation. So it's a little bit of a you know, uh, uh, let this momentum play out and see secondary patterns on the dollar. And while that occurs, you're still waiting on uh, a breakout of 29 and a half as of right now. Obviously, that's going to change a little bit with this volatility to the downside in silver. Silver's taking it on the chin here today. Very sensitive to economic data is silver and copper, specifically coming out of China. So you're seeing a little bit of risk off environment due to that lack of stimulus coming out. out. But at the end of the day, let's see what happens here. Because if you form up support again, that's not going to be a bad look going into that breakout again. So the biggest flaw in the silver analysis is we never got confirmation above 29 and a half. Does that change the 29 and a half conversation if we do pivot? No, it does not. Keep your eye on the price. And that is a breakout. Even even, even with the downward pressure in price right now, it is still a breakout type conversation. Now, if we work a little bit further down, Mark, we're going to have a different conversation there on 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 that. You know, if you can get somewhere around 27, look at a little bit of a pivot point right there. But silver off the radar until we see this momentum play out uh, due to the Chinese lack of stimulus coming uh, into the market here today. When you're looking at copper, obviously copper is very sensitive to Chinese economic data. Chinese stimulus. You saw that uh, drop down in price as well. I see this more as a pullback. I see silver is a little bit more challenging now, um, given the fact that it was in a multiple time frame breakout scenario. You were overextended with a lot of chop here on copper. That's coming down a little bit as that alleviates a little bit of that. I don't see this as a as, as necessarily a negative on on copper. I do see it as a negative on silver. I don't necessarily see it as a negative thing on on copper, given the fact that you did have to work out some of the volatility, and we are still seeing that play out. Look for a bottoming formation happening on copper. On on gold, you're seeing a little bit of giving up that nine EMA and rolling over a little bit. You're looking at the breakout of twenty seven hundred. Now the uh, ultimate question is, where do you see support? start forming because if you start working down a little bit you could see that as a bullish retracement and start to look at it as an opportunity at the lower price but obviously it goes without saying whenever you see big red candles in the market you don't try to pick up big big red candles that's like trying to catch a falling knife you got to let the knife hit the ground then pick it up that's my recommendation on the commodity side right now. Yeah, and just real quick, the crude oil chart uh, before we wrap up. I mean, obviously, crude oil had been putting some pressure, I think, on stocks, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, when you see that go up, it affects yields. It affects a lot of market things. 
Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big red engulfing candle. Uh, we've talked about the high degree of difficulty. This right now is a spectator chart for me, just because it influences the rest of the macro. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one day we'll have a chart, but uh, you know, it is uh, uh, alleviating some of the pressure uh, that was on the market uh, yesterday, right? Uh, on well, it's one of the reasons we're seeing it green across the board in the stock market is because crude oil specifically is down, alleviating some of the worst case. I, I don't want to say those are off the board. We have not seen what Israel is going to do, but you are seeing a little bit of alleviation here on the crude oil chart, and that is obviously impacting the stock market here today. All right. Listen, uh, we're going to continue these conversations on the Trader Lounge, talk more in depth. Uh, more in depth about tech, uh, look at specific charts. Uh, come join us. Fantastic community, tacklecrading.com. Sign up for that 15 day free trial.